him on, but I... President Ben Portley. Here. President Pro Tem Narsh. Here. Council Member Hobbs. Here. Council Member Lamb. Here. Council Member Matheson. Here. And both Council Member Luxinger and Rod both request this be excused. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Did you plan to shutter that door? Thank you. Did we can are we recording this for the two missing people? The recording? Okay. Okay. So we have before us <coughs> this afternoon the purpose of the special meeting is to interview candidates for the position of village manager. And we have before us five candidates with a forty minute time limit, five minute recess, and a repeat after that. And um, we have a series of questions that were reviewed by the council, 18 different questions with the resume uh, <clears throat> indicating desire, background, education, and experience uh, before us. And today's objective is, is to conduct the interviews it has been stated by council that they'd like to have a full council in attendance for deliberation and acceptance of who may be the possible manager going forward. So we will not be doing that today because we do not have a full council. Everybody in agreement with that? Council? Yes. Is that the way you understand it? Thank you. So I would like to open up though with public comment at this time. Anybody from the public that would like to comment on a non-agenda item? Close the public comment and begin with the interviews. And Mr. O'Neill, thank you, sir. You are currently serving as our interim, and we appreciate the service that you're doing for us currently. And I'll begin with the questions. Have you had an opportunity to see these questions, by the way? No. Okay, good. Please give us a brief review of your professional experience and achievements. Well, <clears throat> I started uh, a long time ago and uh, with the city of Southfield. And at that time, I believe I was the state's first code enforcement officer. I hired under the CETA program, and I was supposed to be there for nine months. I left seven years later to become a city manager. I went from administrative assistant to city manager. But while working in Southfield, I worked uh, in the I started in the building department. Then I was promoted to uh, administ administrative assistant, where I issued your certificates, certificates of occupancy for all the buildings that you see, Prudential Town Center. I issued all all those certificates of occupancy. Then I was promoted to. Uh, senior administrative assistant where I worked for one of the four assistant city managers, they called them super department heads. And uh, the uh, first one was uh, public services where I had uh, water, sewer, uh, motor pool, uh, planning, building, all the things that we do in the public. From there I was, promo I was transferred over to public safety. I was senior administrative ass assistant to Jerry Tobin who was the public safety director, who was police, fire, and civil defense. I just effectuated their budget for them and got the job as the city manager in Kego Harbor. I worked there for a couple of years and uh, became city manager of Clawson. I worked there for about 15 years. Uh, I 
was the interim manager in Howell, and I was the township manager in Marion Township. I was helping them uh, bring in water and sewer from the city of, of uh, Howell because waste management was going to put in a landfill. And if you didn't have water and sewer, well, you were going to get a landfill. Anyway, I went from there to Madison Heights for a short period of time, worked as assistant DPW director. And uh, I was there for about six months, then I went to the city of East Point uh, as a city manager, and I was there six years. Uh, one of the things that we were able to accomplish in, in uh, East Point was we've got a uh, seven mil property tax increase. It was a 60% increase. And we did that uh, for public safety because we would have, cuts were so bad in, in the early 2000s, as you all know, and we were able to get that, and that millage is still in place to this day. Um, there was one member of the board that was against the millage, and he didn't get reelected. That's how positive they wanted that. Um, we did a lot of good things in all the cities I've been in, but to keep going, I, then I, I left East Point in 2006 and moved to Florida as a county administrator for Hendry County. And Hendry County abuts Lee County. So I'm real, I've been watching what's been going down there real close because I know a lot of people who live down there. I know about Lee County because you have Lee County, Hendry County, West Palm Beach County, right in a row across the state. So um, that county was 640 square miles. And I used to go around it in a helicopter. That's how big it was. Now, there wasn't a lot of population there, but you know we had citrus, we had uh, um, cattle, sugar cane was very, very big. Um, then from there, I came back to Michigan with the MLA City, E-Course, Fraser, and now I'm here. Um, I will tell you that my biggest challenge and biggest accomplishments were in my last community. Uh, I hired in uh, as our interim manager in Fraser, January 3rd, I believe the date was, of 2017. The day Christmas Eve before is when they had the sinkhole that was the size of a football field and 60 feet deep on 15 mile. And we had houses falling into the sinkhole. So I walked into that along with some other issues that you see there in my resume that were dealt with some elected officials and some problems associated with the employees. Um, I want to address that just real briefly right now. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, I had to do some things relative to the employees that is my job, number one, representing you as the village board, is to make sure the employees are treated properly, that we comply with OSHA standards. And, and Mr. Narsh, you know, there's a myriad of things that we have to comply with that the private sector don't, doesn't even realize that we have to do. And just keeping up with these unfunded mandates and all these different things that we have to do is a full-time job for your manager. And while you're about 2.3 2 square miles and half of it's lake, you've got so much going on here. You are going to need somebody that's seasoned, whether it's me or Darwin or whoever, you're gonna need somebody season. This is not a pushover community. You've got $150 million worth of projects in the pipeline right now. And, you know, Susan's knocking her brains out to get the packet out for your Monday Planning Commission meeting. So one of the things I pride myself on is having had to be hands-on with all the different aspects. I, I was the gopher. I was the gopher in Southfield when they were going gangbusters. And I worked for some smart people. And hopefully some of it rubbed off. But I was, you know, at the right hand of these guys are at the top of their game. Uh, the one intern we had is the uh, executive director of the ICMA. The other finance guy we had was the executive director of the ICMA RC. Um, I mean, I could go on and on with these people that I had a chance to work for. Uh, Jerry Tobin, he was when I think you know, knew Jerry, he died on the operating table at, at the hospital, and he was at the top of his game when he, we took him from Birmingham and made him the public safety director, and he was 
very good. So when I went to Keiko Harbor and I dealt with Wild Bill Holloway, and he's gone now, but uh, I, I learned at the right hand of people how you take care of your public safety department, your police, and your department heads, and how important that is. And the training that I had over the years, when I got to Fraser, thank God I had that training, because I used all of it. And coming here, I gotta tell you, <laughs> I've enjoyed it because there's so much going on, and I've touched all these different things, and I've had to go back and reacquaint myself with the rules and regulations for PU, all the things that you're doing. And so that part is fun. I'm not bored by any stretch of the imagination. So anyway, I have a lot of experience, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next question, what experience and success have you had in downtown development? When I got to Clawson in 1985, the, they had formed a DDA under the act in 1977. They hadn't done anything with it. So I had the, uh, we established a TIF, we established the ordinance, we established a DDA board, we started from scratch. I was able, while I was DDA director, uh, I got an intermodal transportation grant for a million dollars where we completely redid the downtown from building facade to building facade. We placed the streets, brick pavers, street trees, the whole nine yards. Now they have since modified that and that with their, their DDA that they have in place. And I feel good about the base, basis that I gave them. I finally told them it was in probably the late 80s, early 90s, I said, I can't do you any good as the, your manager and your DDA director. And I believe at the time the budget was around $30,000. And so the city, uh, Transfer gave them like thirty, forty thousand dollars, so they could hire an executive director. I'm sure they got more money now, but I haven't looked at their budget in a, in a while. But so I've got a lot of experience in that. Thank you. What are your areas of strength as a village manager? Uh, being able to listen. You have to listen, not talk. Listen. People have a. The, you have got to be. At, I, I'm your ambassador and your department heads are your ambassadors. We have to be out in the community and be available. That's why I think it's important that you are members of your Rotary Club and your, build, and your Lions Club. I'm a past president of every one of those groups and I've enjoyed it. And your village manager is your face and your voice and they need to be out there. And your village manager also has to be the one to explain the policies. Because you set policy, and your manager carries out that policy through the budget document. And you have to be able to explain that. And you have to be able to tell people no and explain to them why the answer is no. Not slam the door in their face. Explain to them why the answer is no. Okay? And what happens with that is you build bridges and you, you build a, uh, a sense of everybody belonging and everybody being in place because nobody is given short shrift. Everybody needs to be listened to. And that, I think, should be the, your, your manager's strongest point. Now, don't misunderstand me, Mr. President, members of the board. You're gonna need your manager to know budget, budgeting, all those things. And if you have a seasoned manager, that person should be able to grab the rudder and use your employees. And that's what I've done for the 30 months. I'm cross-training. You've got some good employees, but they haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff. And I'm cross-training them, and they like it. You know, everybody wants to be used. Everybody has a skill set. So use their skill set. You know, find their strengths. And more importantly, find their weaknesses and help their weaknesses. I know I got mine. Okay. <clears throat> Are there areas of management and local government in which you are not particularly strong? Um, I'm not going to do your website. Um, <laughs> you know, I made a decision a long time ago that I'm a manager, I'm a general manager. And I know enough about enough stuff to keep me in trouble. So the one thing that I've not gotten myself involved in is the data processing. I know that I can hire people, your finance directors to do the nuts and bolts of that stuff. Uh, I can't do my job with it without it, but 
Wes was with me the other day when we were changing over some stuff on my computer, and I told him, <laughs> I said, I'm cursed. I said, I can get a 12-year-old to come do the exact buttons I just did, okay? When I do it, and he was standing behind me when I did something, and he goes, I've never seen that before. I said, now you see, now you see. So I get, my weakest point would be the data processing, but I have people that know how to do that. I have to know how to do it in order to do my job, but, you know, forget it. When you want to drill down into it. Could you characterize your style of management? I have a participatory uh, management style. I am not going to micromanage my employees. Uh, they are going to be involved in the decision making process. When they come to me with a problem, I expect them to bring me three different solutions and why one solution is the best and why. And then we will make that decision together. Um, a manager today has got to be a priest. He's got to be a psychologist. It's, you know, everybody has families. And just because their family isn't with them doesn't mean they're not with them. you got to be able to tell when somebody's having trouble, just like what's going on with one of our employees today. So you have to be mindful of these things. And I watch people's moods. I watch people's mood, and um, that's one of the reasons how I found out some of the problems I had in, my, in the last community. Um, you got to be mindful, and you've got to be attentive. What level of community involvement would you envision for yourself <clears throat> during working hours, after hours, weekends? Again, I'm your ambassador. I, I should be expected to be at these extracurricular activities. Um, and I do that. Uh, again, I've been president of every service club, one place or another, and I've always been there. Now, I do, I'm not sure where, I have not found where your Lions Club and your Rotary meet. I think your Rotary meets in the mornings, I think. But I haven't got to that yet. But I think that you should be involved in it. And other places that I've been, Mr. President, members of the board, I've asked the city councils to pay for at least one membership for the department heads in one of the one of the organizations because if they're at these meetings they're available you know we're going to have this jubilee or we're going to have this or that what do i need and if you're in those things you're not getting these 120 day or 60 day things you can help them. You're there, right there in, in the organization. Now, keep be mindful when you get this. This is along the top here. You got to. We have to have this stuff in. Now, I volunteered to be the secretary of the treasurer. Excuse me, secretary of the Lions Club, which is the biggest job of the Lions Club. I did, I think, for three years straight. And the reason I did that because I just learned it, and that's what I do. And I was able to help and and get the weeds out of the way. And that's, that's, that's why I think it's important you're involved. And your department heads. What is your level of experience and expertise in finance, such as tax abatements? Well, everywhere I've been, people want tax abatements. They want them. Um, and that is a policy decision for this board about just how you want to deal with that. You don't have a lot of vacant land. What you're doing here is redevelopment, which is wonderful. But you've got like the Amen Center. That's a, to me, that's a poster child for a 210 tax abatement. That's a poster child. It's been sitting there vacant and you need to do something. It's an eyesore. You get the thing going. You don't get any money from it for five, six, eight, ten years, whatever you decide to do. But at the end, you've got a beautiful tax paying project and you get rid of you got rid of blight. So when you do these PUDs and these different things, you need to have a trade-off as to what the village is going to get in relation to that trade-off. So again, uh, when I was in Southfield, they were paying top dollar for the property. They, 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 they couldn't come to us hat in hand, we need a tax abatement. Well wait a minute, you're building a 40-story building. You know, forget it. 
But t in today's, you know, economy and stressed economy, this COVID, you know, you need to work where you can hand and glove with developers and to, to do what's best on, on an individual basis for your different projects. Thank you. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. Well, um, what I've tried to do everywhere I've been is to indicate to the members of the board their fiduciary responsibility, the responsibility of the administration, and how it's not just how much money you don't spend, it's how you spend what you spend. I've told every one of my councils, and I'm going to tell this to you too, do not take the training money out of your budget because you're going to get lawsuits if they happen. And the first thing that happens to your department heads, when they call them up for a deposition, they ask, oh, so you've been doing this for a long time. When was the last time you had any training? Are you up to speed with best practices and stuff like that? So you'd better have that training money in your budget. And then I know the councils want to say, the first thing they want to take out is that training money, don't do that. The other side of that is, it's easy to take away the recre recreation money, your library money, those intangibles. I always say, you gotta be careful with that because that's what makes your community. Without your parks and your open spaces, you got nothing. Why would somebody wanna come here versus somewhere else? And that's the other thing about taxes. Everybody pays taxes. Everybody's taxes are high everywhere I've ever been. Here's what I try to explain to my board. Do I want to live in the village of Lake Orion and my taxes are X? Or do I want to go to another community where my taxes are a little bit higher, but I get all these services? And if I have all these services, my property values are going up. If I cut my tax rate where I can't pro provide any services, Oh, I'm paying a lower tax rate, but the residents don't have any services. People don't want to live here. Property values start to decline. If your property values decline, your school system declines. Everything goes with it. And your most valuable asset is your home. So if you keep your tax rate where you can provide the quality services, and I say your value of your home goes up 2%, your house is worth 200,000, you just made four grand. If it goes down 2% and you start that downward slide, that's hard to get that back. So that's the fiscal integrity that I try to talk to my boards about making sure that you don't cut so much that you're hurting yourself. You got to be careful that it's a balance. What is your experience and expertise in personnel management and labor relations? Have you had occasion to terminate an employee? Explain the circumstances. Uh, yes. Uh, unfortunately, when you terminate an employee, you terminate a family because they have a family. And terminations a lot of times can arise out of the failure of the administrative staff to make sure that that employee is getting the proper guidance that they need. So. What I try to do is I try to give them, give whomever the, the proper guidance, the most proper guidance. The employees that I've had to terminate for the most part, uh, we've caught them stealing. I had to terminate an assistant city manager that put in for eyeglasses twice. And I don't make any exceptions to that. I mean, if you're gonna steal, you're all done. You're all done. I mean, I don't even, you have to give them louder mills. You have to, there's all kinds of things that you have to do, uh, especially in the police department, with making sure that they have the guarantee, all the different <laughs> rules and regulations, whatever. I had an issue with a police officer being charged with cowardice. And, and instead of firing that individual on the spot, I let him retire. So I try to be fair and try to be kind, but the 
the unions for both the command and the, the um, rank and file both indicated to this individual they could no longer work for him anymore because you won't back up the next guy and they don't want to work with you. And that's, that's a bad issue. And I've, I've had them stealing. I had a, the things that people do is just, it, it blows your mind. It's you lose your job because you put in a six slip. That's a bogus six slip. I had a, if I catch somebody that's cheating, I, I can't use you anymore. Especially if you're a police officer. I, 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 because they have to, when they go to court, they have to say that they, they, they were caught lying. And so it's real tough being on this side of the table, I'll tell you. But I do it. What is your experience in planning, community development, and redevelopment? Okay. Um, I was the lia liaison to the planning commission for the city of Southfield from the building department. So I have experience with, well, we met every week, you know, with all the developments going on in the 70s uh, in Southfield and the 80s. Um, and then, of course, I've been in most of the communities I've been in haven't been real large where I was the face of it. And when I was in Clawson, uh, I was a secretary of the planning commission and a voting member. And the developers would come in and I would review the plan basically and take a look at it. And I'd tell them, this ain't going anywhere. This is, this, this, this is garbage. I, I, I didn't pull any punches. And this is garbage. And he said, well, I want to do that. Okay. So they come to the planning commission, they're upset, and I'm like, you know, no. I mean, but I tell people, look, you need to massage this. You need to do this, you need to do that. There's a way to do things. But, uh, Mr. President, to get back on point, I've had experiences from the very large cities to small cities, uh, redevelopment, just exactly what's going on. I got a re-education in the last three months. I mean, <coughs> look what's going on on the lake and the things are going on. I mean... That's an education by itself the last 90 days. It's almost like I'm on a sabbatical. So yeah, I've enjoyed it and you know, I've got a lot of experience. Describe your experience in intergovernmental relations, working with other cities, regional authorities, state officials, and others. Okay. Um, I sat on in, in many intergovernmental boards. I sat on what they call SACRA, in Sakwa, which is South Oakland County Resource Recovery Authority, and the South Oakland County Water Authority, made up of the what we call the Dirty Dozen, which are the city managers from the uh, Southeast and Oakland County. Um, I was chairman of the uh, Oakland County City Managers Association. My l latest one was when I was in Emily City. I sat on the intergovernmental uh, a a board where we were. Uh, doing a redevelopment coming from um, Halifax, Nova Scotia, coming down through um, Port Huron, through Sarnia. People don't realize it, but there's double-decker trains underneath the Detroit or the St. Clair River coming from Sarnia into Port Huron. And that were, those goods and services were going to send down the I-69 corridor all the way to Waco, Texas. The reason we were doing that is the developers and the people that were shipping this stuff in did not want to go through Chicago or the West Coast because it's bottleneck. Well, you see it now, and that's why they wanted to avoid it. And I, I sat on that, and uh, and when I was in Florida, they, we were looking at inland, not Marines. I'm trying to think, and Mr. Mr. President, I'm at a loss word. Inland ports, inland ports. And in Hendry County, we were almost parallel with um, uh, Port Everglades. And we had three major highways and they were gonna do an inland port where we could ship stuff all over the United States from there. And so I was involved with that, so. Okay, we have nine more minutes. What is your experience in managing public works activities, including road maintenance, utilities, and construction projects? When Southfield, I was a senior administrative assistant to the public services director, and we were responsible for all of those uh, things. I did the budgets for all of those. Um, 
I was, I was directly responsible for the motor pool uh, there, and I had line authority with reference to the public safety, public services director, the uh, uh, um, water and sewer department, all of those. And of course, they had their own projects that they did. Describe your technology expertise and what software are you proficient in using? Well, I use all, I use all of the offices, the BSNA and stuff like that. I'm familiar with all of those. As I said to you before, I'm not an expert in that. That's probably my weakest point, but I have to know enough about these softwares in order to, to do my job. And I do, well, you see the stuff, I send it to you. Have you ever assisted a community with becoming a city? Mm, no, no. What can you bring to the village of Light Orion? Why should you be chosen as the new village manager? Because I have a myriad of experience in a lot of different areas, and I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I know how to try to start, step on landmines, and not make the same mistakes. Um, I know what employees like, I know what employees dislike. And I work with my employees in a manner that they feel good about themselves. They're not afraid to make a mistake that, you know, they'll work. If you make people afraid to make a mistake, they won't work for you, you're all done. You're all done. So. I'm in it with them. If they succeed, I succeed. If they don't succeed, I fail. And I make sure they know that. So that, you know, I try to mentor my staff. Uh, I was thinking today uh, about how many times I've interviewed for city manager. And I'm thinking also about how many current city managers that I mentor right now. I got three phone calls this week and I was at a mayor's meeting last night and for another community. And I'm, you know, I help people and I, they call me, and so I, I help them. Do you plan to live in the village? No. Now, I say that now because I've got the full-time job. My wife has a, waded into it, and, and, I, and she's been on that lake many times, and she likes the lake. So when I say no, I'm not going to lie to you and say, hey, I'm going to move in tomorrow. But once my wife gets a load of this, because she likes that lake, we fish it, and she swims that sandbar out there, and I didn't know that's where everybody went. I just knew it was shallow and the bluegills. She's over there and I'm catching my fish. But yeah, she'd love to be on a lake. Are you kidding me? Have you ever been dismissed from a position? Oh yeah. Yeah, as a city manager, most every one of them. They, uh, they either terminate you with or without cause. Uh, you can, in, my, in this business, if a person <laughs> says they haven't been terminated, say, <laughs> you haven't worked anywhere as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Jerry's got that smile on his face. I mean, we collect no votes. That's what happens. We collect no votes. And when, once you collect the majority of no votes, you're out the door. And the only thing managers have is their severance, you know? And if you've got a strong manager, your manager's going to tell people no. And I consider myself a strong manager, and I'm going to tell you no. But I'll tell you why it's no, you know? Just like this thing we had with these barricades and stuff like that. I made it a point to go by there on the way in here to take a look at that. And I says to Wes, you move the barricades around the corner. He goes, no, we got to pray. Those are ours. They took your barricades last night. And the thing was, we wanted to move those off the sidewalk. I found out later after you and I talked that the business owners moved those barricades onto the sidewalk. They're supposed to have been left in the street to block that patch off. And they had moved them. They shouldn't have been moved at all. And they shouldn't have been moved to your sidewalk. They, 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 the the pe people down there did that. And so we were told not to touch that. And the co company that was going to come do the patch today, I said, you're going to use their barricades? They go, no, I can't touch consumers' barricades because then we're, we're responsible for their, their, their job. So that's why we didn't do it. I mean, I would have went down there myself and moved them, but I knew we couldn't. But it worked itself out. So yeah, that's what happens. If you were offered the position, when would you be able to start? I'm working now. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, you know the answer. 
Yeah. So immediately. Yeah, I haven't missed. I haven't missed a minute since I started. And I took some time off, but you know I'm going to take some time off. I'm, my birthday's coming up, and we're going to Traverse City, so I'll be off a couple of days. Good. So that would be conclusion with two minutes uh, that we just beat this by. So we're going to take a seven-minute recess. And in the spirit of keeping everything consistent, we just ask these questions and that's it. And then we'll do an evaluation at a later date. Well, actually, all council members will be doing their evaluation and then there will be deliberation and discussion at a later date. And I thank you, sir. Well, thank you for letting me uh, work here. I've enjoyed it. Uh, you got a great city, village, great city, whatever you want to call it. That's great. And uh, uh, I mean, I don't envy you. Hiring and, and that's one last thing. Hiring and firing are the two hardest things to do. Do I have the right person? Damn it, I gotta fire somebody. But that comes with the territory. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Thank you. Okay. Right now, council, we have a recess until 4.45 and we resume. Thank you.
Welcome, Mr. Lancamper. Yep. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, it's pretty close. Oh, good. <laughs> and <clears throat> we uh, thank you for being here today. 40 minute opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have a series of 18 questions. Okay. And we're not doing any other questions outside of these 18 so that we keep a, uh, an even playing field, if you will, for all participants. Sure. And um, you're welcome to speak as long as you'd like on one or as short as you'd like on another. And hopefully we'll get through and not have to cut you off before we get all 18. Sounds good. So I'll begin. Question number one. Please give us a brief review of your professional experience and achievements. Sure. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me, let me uh, start off with thank you guys for allowing me to be here tonight and the interview with you. Um, so yeah, my professional achievements, uh, as you all know, I'm the village manager of Edmore. Edmore is located in Montcalm County. It's pretty much right in the middle of the state. It's also a smaller village. We've got about 1,200 residents there. Uh, I've been there for the last three years. Uh, prior to being the uh, village manager, I worked for a uh, think tank in Washington, D.C. It's uh, federally funded by the German government. It's called the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. Um, there, I was a program manager. I worked in certain policy areas, um, but a lot of the work that I did was connecting European parliamentarians with their American counterparts, whether that would be in government uh, and other think tanks or at other agencies in, in, uh, in the U.S. Um, and prior to that, I actually have experience doing heating and cooling um, here, just a little bit south of here in Rochester Hills. Uh, that's my family's business, and that's what I grew up doing. Uh, so my education is uh, from Kalamazoo College. I have a BA there, and I have a master's degree in public administration from Wayne State. Great. Thank you. Question two, what experience and success have you had in downtown developments? Sure. Um, we, I am our DDA director in Edmore. Uh, we have a much smaller uh, budget than, than you guys do. Um, and our concerns and needs are different than here. Um, we're dealing mostly with infill, trying to uh, fill vacant buildings, uh, encourage building owners to utilize their spaces. Um, but one of the things that we did do there to encourage that development was we made some zoning changes. Um, and so that wasn't through the DDA, obviously, but um, we had a bunch of buildings with apartments on top of them, but we had no mixed use development in our zoning ordinance. Uh, which would allow for them to be used. Some of them were being used, obviously outside of the zoning ordinance, and some of them weren't. So we went into the ordinance, we created mixed use developments. Um, that has led to two additional units being renovated and being used. Um, and so, you know, bring up property value in our downtown area. Um, another thing that we've been working on, it hasn't been implemented yet, uh, but at my, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been uh, kind of pushing for it, is for us to use some money that the DDA received from a land sale for a, uh, for a facade grant program. Again, uh, part of our issue that we have is, is, is investment and development. And so we've been trying to push this idea that if we created a small facade grant program, that we could encourage some people to, to uh, you know, paint the fronts, maybe redo some facades uh, and, and make things look better. Um, and also we are currently in the process of discussing a moderate streetscape program um, which would include the replacement and removal of some of our downtown trees. Um, that, I'm sure, as you all know, is not as simple as one might think. Uh, there's a lot of differing opinions on how many trees, what type of trees, where they should be, where they shouldn't be. Um, so we're still working through that, but uh, a way to help facilitate that conversation, we've organized a joint meeting uh, on next Monday between the DDA and the council um, to discuss those plans further. Uh, and it also includes buying some planter boxes and things uh, just to kind of screw stuff up. So like I said, it's a different set of needs than you guys have here, but that's what, that's what we've been doing. Thank you. What are your areas of strength as a village manager? Um, I, I tend to think of myself as a, as a bridge builder and as a communicator, um, and I think that goes a long way as being a manager. Um, and also as, you know, being a generalist, um, insofar as I can learn what I need to learn about a particular area, whether that's zoning, whether that's HR or, or whatnot, um, and to be able to contribute to that conversation productively or help solve problems 
uh, among other, other groups, or sorry, other department heads and things like that, but I don't necessarily need to be the exact uh, uh, expert in all of those things. Um, and I think I do that very well. Uh, I, not only my experience in, as a city manager, but as I was talking about my previous work in, in Washington, D.C., um, I would sit in the room with experts for policy from all over the board. Uh, you know, it could be a chairman of a, of a committee from the German parliament, um, sitting with experts at a think tank, and I'm in the middle facilitating this conversation about something that I perhaps might have not known a whole lot about a couple of weeks beforehand. Um, you know, so uh, being able to uh, facilitate that conversation among experts as the mediator, uh, I think that applies very well. It's helped me a lot in my position at Edmore, and that's something I pride myself on. Are there areas of management and local government in which you are not particularly strong? Um, well, I, I would say, so there's an area that I, I, I just straight up don't have experience with, and that's with union negotiation. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have any bargaining units in Edmore. Uh, it is not an experience that I've had. I have taken courses on it in my MPA. I negotiate other contracts. Um, we do have, uh, uh, we have a police contract with the county. Um, you know, we have a police department from our township, which I talk with. Um, we have our garbage contracts. We have all of those things. I'll, I negotiate those. I've negotiated uh, settlement agreement and implementation, uh, implementation thereof with a, uh, with a cellular provider that we had a dispute with. Um, so I have experience in negotiating contracts, just not particularly in that setting. So I would say that that would be, you know, an area. Thank you. Yeah. Could you characterize your style of management? Yeah, um, I mean, I think I alluded, alluded to it a little bit. Uh, I like to be well-informed. Um, I do like to try and take a step back in high-pressure situ or loaded situations so that, you know, there's some managers that are hard charging uh, going in there. Uh, I think that that can be important in the right situation, but I think that the role of the manager is really to facilitate and to lead, right? And I think that when you're, as you're leading, you can only do that through competency. People only want to follow you if you have shown them that you are either A, willing to do the work yourself, and B, know what you're talking about, right? And also, C, being able to admit when you might not know everything in this situation. Like I was talking about before, there'll be a department head who's gonna know more about something than you are. That doesn't mean that you can't lead them, but that, does, that does mean that you need to listen to them. So being very open, um, allowing communication in all directions, I think is very important as a leader. Um, and that all facilitates the ability for you to go in when you do need to stand up and say, hey, we gotta get this done, this is how it's gonna go. I know this is perhaps not exactly what you wanna be doing, but that people can trust you to understand that you know what the proper thing to do. And even if they might disagree with you, that they're willing to you know, go, go along with you anyhow. And I, you can't get that if you're, just, if you're just in people's faces and being too aggressive about stuff. So. Okay. What level of community involvement would you envision for yourself during working hours, after hours, weekends? Sure, I mean, I think the, uh, the manager has to be, you know, part of the community, has to be out there, uh, has to be on the street. So during community hour, or during business hours, that does involve getting out, talking to business owners. It does involve being open to residents coming in to talk to you. Uh, I have a very open door policy where I'm currently at. Uh, there's very few people that don't know me. There's probably no business owners that don't know me. And I, I would hope to think that there's, and nobody would feel uh, as though they couldn't come talk to me. Now, this being a little bit of a large organization, I don't know if, it, you know, I would have, I'll be able to have that level of open door all the time. However, uh, it would be my goal to make sure that anybody who knows that I'm available. Um, and that would be, you know, your service groups, your different boards, uh, even other governments, your township, your schools, uh, things of that nature. I mean, it's, it's very important. Um, things that I do in Edmore, uh, we have, a core group of committees uh, and groups, uh, service organizations, the Lions Club, we have an arts council, um, we have a festival committee. Uh, I will attend their meetings, not all the time. When I can, I do. Uh, but I'm very well acquainted with all of the, those, uh, those stakeholders. And um, you know, most of them have my cell phone number. Most of them call me. Uh, if they need something, you know, we chat about it. So I, I, I do pride myself on that, and I think it's very important to be available. Good. What is your level of experience and expertise in finance, such as tax abatements? 
Um, I don't know if I would call myself an expert in that. My experience with municipal budgeting is as being a manager of Edmore. So that means I've been through three cycles of, of preparing a budget. Um, we have some tax abated properties. We have some properties that have a, a pilot. Uh, we have not done any since I have been there. Um, we actually have a few that are running out right now that we dealt with. Um, so, you know, in those situations, I have a finance director uh, who is the expert in that scenario. I work very closely with her in drafting the budget uh, and working on those, uh, those issues. So, um, yeah, I, again, I, uh, in that, that role, there's room, there's room for me to learn, sure. Sure. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. Fiscal environment. Um, so in my com current community, we, they're, they're fiscally, they're, they're doing well, uh, particularly in, in our general fund. Um, and we had, uh, our problem fund was our water fund. Uh, and it, it continues to be. And the way that we've been working on that is um, we have effectively in our, our general fund is very flush due to a couple uh, windfall and situations uh, where they were had to receive some large payouts. Um, and that money it was kind of sitting there um, being untouched. I mean, our, our, our fund balance is over 300%. Uh, in our general fund, so that in that direction, that's also not great. I mean, it's great that we have ton, like you know money there for a rainy day, but it's you know it needs to be used wisely. So we started with transferring some of that to the water fund, which uh, needs it. And despite being a service fund, um, you know we felt that it was necessary to make these water improvements that are frankly mandated by the state uh, to be taken care of, and that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So uh, that's been how we've been addressing that, and. We've also been seeking out grants um, to, particularly for our water water fund. Um, but in general, you know, we run a pretty tight ship. I would say a lot of our decision making is is very fiscally uh, responsible. In in that, uh, the dollar drives a lot of our decisions. Not negatively, in so far as that we don't do things that, you know, just because they cost money that we don't do them if they need to be done. But that's always something that is in the back of my mind and certainly in the back of my council's mind, so. Okay. What is your experience and expertise in personnel management and labor relations? Have you had occasion to terminate an employee? Explain the circumstances. So I've not um, terminated an employee. And as I alluded to before, I've not been uh, party to any union negotiations. Uh, we have. We do have a pretty small crew um, where I'm at. Uh, we have had some problems, um, uh, s some personnel issues that we have dealt with through the standard process of you know documentation, communication, um, and working with the individual. You know I think that that's important. Most of our personnel issues actually have come in the form of retention um, in our DPW department. We've had gone through a number of people. Uh, I think that that we had. You know that had to do with things like pay and and, and the like, but it was, it's a difficult time uh, to find folks in there. So uh, I think retention is important, and if you have an issue, to to be working with the individual, giving them their you know their due process uh, and the opportunity to to rectify the situation. Um, and so that has taken the form of department head discussing the issue with me, taking notes, us informing the employee of what our you know concerns were, and est basically establishing a uh, a plan of action for them to rectify some of their deficiencies. Okay. We're moving right along. What is your experience in planning, community development, <clears throat> and redevelopment? Yeah, um, so in Edmore, I am the zoning administrator. Uh, I'm also uh, basically our planner. Um, we don't have a planner on staff. Uh, if we do need something outside of that, we use consultants. Um, so anything that we, any development or changes that we've made to our zoning ordinance has, have been uh, driven by myself. Um, one, of the, one of the major uh, developments that we've used, or one of the tools that we've used uh, is we enacted the, uh, the marijuana ordinances. 
Uh, when I came to the community, they discussed it with me. They asked me what my opinion was. I effectively told them, I'll leave the morality and all the questions about that sort of thing up to you in the community to decide if this is something that you want in your town. But if it is, you know, this is how we can do it. And these are the things that we can do. This is the things that will happen. And the reality of it is, is that in our market there, um, that was, there were very few things that were going to provide that level of development there. So it was decided by the council that they wanted to move forward with it. I um, spent a lot of time discussing with other communities that had already done it, communities in our area, communities down here in this area, um, and crafted our ordinance. Uh, that has led to a significant amount of development. We sold, we, we've sold about $500,000 worth of, of land that the village owned that had been previously for sale for about 15 years that didn't sell for $10,000. So um, it really aided in that. But it also brought about the fact that we had new buildings and new businesses coming to town that we didn't have new buildings built for 15 years. Right? And so that was a competency that not a whole lot of people knew how to deal with having new facilities being, being built in our industrial park. Um, so I have you know, led us through that. Currently, we have three buildings being built right as we speak, uh, two that have been finished. Um, I feel as though they've all gone quite well. The, the, the developers the, and the, um, you know, have all been happy to work with us. Uh, and the community, you know, they, they've gotten behind it and they, they've appreciated it. Um, and I'm sorry, so you were talking about, is there anything else? There? Planning, community development, planning. and redevelopment. Yeah. So in, the, in planning, in terms of planning, like I said, we, we did do some zoning ordinance changes uh, pretty early on particularly with adding those uses, the, the mixed uses, to our downtown area. Um, but we also have been somewhat aggressive in um, adding uses to our districts that were already being used, but uh, weren't, weren't in the zoning ordinance, right? And so we, we, we basically took the planning commission, we, took a, we went building by building, looked at what was being done, asked ourselves, is this something that is natural to this area? You know, should this be allowed in, here, in, in this district? Uh, and if it was, we ended up adding it. And in a few small cases where we had things that were completely outside of the norm, housing in an industrial area, uh, you know, we went after that and we got rid of it. You know, we, we, uh, we enforced the ordinance at that point. So for me, our planning was really getting everybody on board that we have this document that we need to update, keep, keep alive, and then follow. Um, and it's, it's been going well. Good. Describe your experience in intergovernmental relations, working with other cities, regional authorities, state officials, and others. Sure. Um, so I recently received a grant um, from, from MDOT uh, for Category B funding to do some of our road maintenance. Uh, and in that process, we had a little bit of a hiccup as to um, our <laughs> Effectively, I applied with an application that was accepted, uh, and then after the fact, they realized that what I had proposed was not exactly what they wanted. So, you know, we had to work with MDOT for a while to get the bid process in line with what they were doing. Um, that included me working with our road commission, um, who was going to be doing the work for us, uh, as they normally do, uh, and really utilizing the road commissioner, um, the director there, to discuss the situation with MDOT. Uh, and we got through it and figured it out and now, you know, we've received our grant and we've done a lot of chip sealing this year. Um, on the intergovernmental side, as I mentioned before, we do contract with our county for police services. Um, so we, uh, we're continuously in contact with the, the sheriff. Uh, and then we also have our township, right? We're also a village. We're a general law village. You guys are a home, home rule village, but uh, we still have our outlying township um, with whom we share some responsibilities and we often uh, I don't I'm not implying this at all of you but it is generally it has but I've seen it a lot you know that, that that relationship can be a bit adversarial and that was the case where I was at when I came in so I made it was sure it was very important for me to reach out to the township supervisor to their board uh, make sure they knew me I went to their meetings had meetings with the supervisor often so we went from having no communication to having a fair amount where, you know, if there are issues, they're just calling me and not, it's not just getting talked about uh, in, a, in a negative manner. Um, so 
in terms of uh, we share, we have share, uh, mutual share agreements with our other local municipalities for DPW services, uh, you know, for use of trucks, um, things of that nature. Uh, and that's all, you know, it's codified, but it's also pretty pet casual in that, you know, a manager, manager might give me a call and say, hey, you know, our guys need to do this. Um, is that something we can, we can borrow and we fill out the paperwork and get it done, so. Okay. What is your experience in managing public works activities, including road maintenance, utilities, and construction projects? Yeah, um, again, uh, as I was just talking about, we just had a received our grant. Um, that was for chip sealing, which is the majority of the work that we've been doing lately on our roads. But we also had some, uh, uh, some overlays done uh, to our roads. Uh, I facilitated that, and again, we used that is, we contracted that out, you know, our DTW, that's something that our DPW can handle on their own. Um, I, most of the activities that they do, our director, our DPW director is handling. However, we do work pretty closely together. Um, <laughs> this isn't, this doesn't answer your question, but on my way down here, I dropped off one of our pumps from our main lift station at, at Jet Pump in, Wa in Waterford because we needed to bring it down here and I was headed down. So, um, yeah, we haven't had a lot of major major infrastructure projects uh, that we've overseen. And like I said, we use a lot of contractors for that. So my management thereof is generally with managing a contract and the contractor. Okay. Describe your technology expertise and what software are you proficient in using? Um, so like everybody, Microsoft Word, right? Um, and the whole suite. Um, but no, I, I, I'm quite proficient with those. Um, we do use a different, um, uh, finance software called Fund Balance. Uh, it's not something that most communities use. I imagine that you guys use BSNA. Um, so that would be uh, something that I would need to catch up on. Um, but however, I am generally quite technologically proficient. Um, I do have some experience with video editing. I have a lot of experience with back-end maintenance of, of, uh, of home pages. Uh, I, you know, I manage our website here. I did it at my old job. I've done it for uh, members of parliament. Um, so, you know, using that and social media, things of that nature is, is uh, something that I can do quite well. Um, we were lacking a bit uh, in technological advances in my office um, since I've been there. We have redone our <coughs> web page. Uh, you know, we hired that out, but that was something that I oversaw. Um, we have instituted credit card payments, which was something that we didn't have previously. Um, we have uh, our we use Ponum for our cemetery uh, records. That was already implemented before I got there. However, um, we've had some issues with the program and we had to effectively re redo it. Um, and so I've done that while, since I've been there. And in my old office, I was especially, essentially the IT guy, even though I'm not. Um, and that <laughs> involved me being, led to me being involved in the project of completely rewiring our office for network stuff. So anyhow. <laughs> Okay. Have you ever assisted a community with becoming a city? No. Um, however, I have looked into it because it's interesting to me as well in my current position. So uh, I've discussed it with some other managers who have done it uh, in the past, but I, I have not. So. Okay. What can you bring to the Village of Lake Orion? Why should you be chosen as the new village manager? Yeah, um, you know, I, I consider myself a trustworthy guy. I consider myself a leader, and I'm very eager to build on my career. Um, you know, so as I've said, I've been in Edmore now, uh, got into the business. I really understand and know that this is what I want to be doing, um, and I anticipate having a long and, and successful career. Um, the village of Lake Orion would be a wonderful step for me, but it would also be a place that I could be for, you know, for a time and be able to affect change and make my mark here. Uh, and that's something that I'm very, very excited about doing. Um, but also, you know, I, have, I don't pretend to have any idea about everything that's going on in, in Lake Orion, um, but you, I know that you guys do have a lot of very large scale developments going on and there's a lot of opinions and a lot of, uh, you know, discussion around a lot of that stuff. So I do think that you need somebody that's able to listen to all parties. I do think you need somebody that's able to communicate with all parties. And again, as I was talking about earlier, that is, that is something that I've done well, um, particularly in my current situation. Um, 
you know, when I when I when I first got to to, to Edmore, um, there were there were issues between different boards. Um, you know, the last manager had been somewhat unceremoniously uh, let go, and uh, it was a little turbulent. You know, and so uh, I really really tried to make sure that all the parties were talking with each other and not at each other. Um, I really made sure to do that by identifying the core issues and really focusing on those core issues and getting people to talk to each other about those things and maybe not all the periphery that people think is really important, but if you really boil it down from an outside perspective, it's not exactly what the, the issue at hand is. Um, and so I feel like I can help do that. And um, again, I'm not trying to imply that, that, you know, that I know what's happening or, or what to do or, or that there's uh, you know, some great need for that, but I do believe that that's a, the skill of a good manager and I have that. Thank you. Do you plan to live in the village? Um, I, I couldn't say yes. Uh, I, would, I would think so. Um, I know that is in your charter um, that is intended for the manager to live in the village. I also know that it's against state law to man have somebody live in a you know, municipality at which you work. Um, but uh, my, I, like I said, I grew up in Rochester Hills. Uh, most of my family lives there. Uh, part of the allure to all this is to being able to come home to this area, and I've always enjoyed Lake Orion, so it would certainly be a place we'd be looking. Okay. Have you ever been dismissed from a position? No. If you were offered the position, when would you be able to start? So my uh, current contract gives a 30 days period for my current employer. Uh, you know, I would intend on taking all of that. Um, and after that, um, I obviously don't currently live here. As I said, I have lots of family in the area. It wouldn't be an issue for me to get down here quickly. Um, but, you know, I think that would be something we could discuss. Okay. That's the 18 questions. Really? I guess I yes. did speed through it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And it's been 25 minutes. I think what would be fair, possibly, since we wouldn't be going outside of our box, but on any of those questions, if there was any other information you'd like to provide. Otherwise, we'll conclude. And what this council is going to do today is <clears throat> we're doing just the interviews and we're not doing any selection mm -hmm. or debate. Mm -hmm. That will come at another meeting. We are short two members who plan to review this via the videotape. Mm -hmm. Once they've done that, we um, look forward to deliberating with a full council as to what the future village manager selection would be. Sure. And anything else that I could help you with that would pertain to those questions that we asked? Um, We're trying to stay within that scope of um, yeah. keeping an even field, if you will. Sure. Uh, I guess you'd ask the question about um, community involvement. Um, I guess I can expound on that a little bit. Uh, you know, and, and, and add more. Um, we do have a, a community foundation. Uh, in fact, we have two. I sit on one of the boards for that foundation. Uh, mostly, we give out grants to for uh, local scholarships for kids going to college, okay. uh, but also with developing uh, community projects. So, you know, the school wanted to put a new sign in uh, during COVID because there were people backed up down the street all because we had to drop everybody off and, and the distancing and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, we, we paid for a new sign for them to put in there, slow down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I don't currently live in Edmore, um, but in the town that I do live in, I am also on the board of a, of a Montessori school. And I've actually been integral in founding that school. Um, it was a school that my kids went to daycare there. It was closing, so uh, me and a couple other of the parents opened it back up within six months. Um, you know, so that was almost a full-time job within itself. Uh, it's obviously all unpaid, um, but I really, you know, believe that it was, it was an important asset to the community, so I'm the treasurer, and we figured out how to become licensed as a, as a school within a six-month time with me and four other folks. So, uh, you know, I have public services is part of what I do and what I believe is important. Um, so I guess I, there would be that. Um, 
Yeah. I do have a couple questions, if you don't mind. Um, or did you not ask of others? Or? No, we did not. Okay. We didn't allow that. Um, you could certainly feel free. I think this would be to con go ahead. We didn't give the opportunity mm -hmm. to the first no. interview, so we probably shouldn't have opened up. That's no. fair. No, I don't want to. So what I was going to suggest is you could call the village. Would that be accurate? I'm sorry. If you have questions that are about our community. Oh, uh, yeah. The, these were just, you know, general interview kind of que type questions, but that's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to rock the boat here, so it's okay. No, 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 <laughs> that's fair, yes. So we'd like to just keep that as even as we possibly can. Yep. And if you have nothing else, we'll conclude. Sounds good. And we all thank you for being here today. Thank you, appreciate it. Mm -hmm.
Yes. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you for having me. We have 18 questions that okay. we will ask you. Ask you. And you have 40 minutes for your response. Okay. Take as long as you like on whatever ones, and make sure you like on others. And hopefully we won't have to cut you short on any of the 18 questions, or we'll get them all in. Okay. Um, but don't, please don't rush. And um, we have no debate or deliberation after that. We're just doing interviews today. Okay. We don't have a full council. There's five of us here. We're missing two other members. They will view the videos. And we will do our debate and selection process on another meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. Hope that answers everything you might be on your mind about that. So we'll start. Very well. Please give us a brief review of the professional experience and achievements. Ooh, brief review of professional experience and achievements. Well, I have been in love with being um, having a role in government since high school and college. <clears throat> Um, even way back in college, I interned for um, the 10th District Congressman at the time, and I also interned for Oakland County, so I've always been interested. I even got to lobby in Washington, D.C., so I um, have an experience, a little bit of experience with that. Um, then I took a little break, because life happens, and then I got back into um, local government, working at a township not too far away from Romeo for a couple years, and I thought I'd take a stab in running for village clerk in my hometown, where I was born and raised, uh, because I have such a knowledge and the love for government and process and procedure and policy, I wanted to make improvements in my own hometown. And I ran in an election that a lot of people told me, you're not going to win. Good luck, though. And I did win. And here I am still. You know, I'm current the, the current village clerk right now. And as villages, you all know, it's an election year for villages. So I'm on the ballot again, though just to see if I can, you know, just continue or, you know, that's my only, that's my prospect right now. Okay, great. What experience of success have you had in downtown development? In downtown development? We do have a separate um, Romeo DDA downtown development authority that I work very closely with right now. She, her office is in my building upstairs and we visit a lot. I, at this time, she's the one who's running, um, the DDA's been running all of our programs right now. They are separate, separate tax capture, separate tax ID, so they are completely separate from the village. My only experience is I'm helping organize some Halloween events coming up in Romeo, and I've volunteered for numerous events with them in the past, even before I was elected. Okay. Again. Yes, sir? There's a ringing in the microphones. I don't... I uh, don't know what we could do. Oh, that might be the helpful item right there. Uh, Ms. Trapp, move one of the microphones away from her, and that might be helpful, but it's not going to allow additional back feed. Okay. Very good. I'm Let's familiar start. with these setups. I, I heard it earlier, though, and uh, it may be here to stay. Okay. That's really strong. We'll do our best. Uh, Mr. Lamb, as an example, moved his microphone away from him. Uh, since none, nobody else is talking except for myself, that might be helpful as well. Okay. What are your areas of strength as a village manager? Areas of strength as a village manager is I do like to oversee proper procedures and policies. I do have a background also. I was part of the Village of Romeo Planning Commission for a few years before I got elected. So obviously being elected, I had to step down. And I help out a lot with our zoning administrator with a lot of planning and zoning items. Okay. All right. Are there areas of management and local government in which you are not particularly strong? Good question, because I do oversee the staff uh, my personal staff, I do not oversee um, like DPW or wastewater. Not so strong. Oh, that is a good question. Can we get, come back to that? 
I mean, I do handle a lot of items in the village, and I know um, possibly maybe response time because you know you get a lot of phone calls, you get a lot of emails immediately, and you do your best to prioritize them time management-wise. Who needs to be responded to immediately, and who can what items can be delegated to? Can you help me respond to this entity or this person or what have you, or return phone calls on my behalf if you can assist me? Okay. Could you characterize your style of management? Style of management. I like to get to know my staff. I do know my staff. I have a great relationship with my staff and the other department heads that I have to work with in the village. I think that's very important. It is very important. I do value those relationships and, and a great working relationship. Like we had a, um, a situation yesterday that I had to confront the, the supervisor of the Department of Public Works. Like, all right, so this is the situation. This is what I'm being told. Can you please explain to me what's going on? And we can go back and forth and, you know, just talk very bluntly of great relationship. I have no problem going down the hall, talking to the police chief, knocking on his door saying, all right, this is what I heard. Can you help me here? Can you give me some advice? Or is this the right path to do? It is very important establishing those relationships. I mean, even down to the cleaning crew, I have a great relationship with our cleaning staff. She can text me, and she, I text her back and forth. You know, I need to know what's going on, what's the problem, if she gives me an update, well, that's her update. We gotta go with her time schedule if there's a change, and just please keep the lines of communication open. Okay. What level of community involvement would you envision for yourself during working hours, after hours, or weekends? Well, currently as the village clerk, I have volunteered a lot for not just the downtown development authority items, I do volunteer for a lot of other items that either with um, other communities or just other events. I volunteered with the Romeo Lions over Labor Day. I do participate in with the Chamber of Commerce items too, whether it's gatherings, networking items, ribbon cuttings, and that is all throughout you know, the day, evening, afternoons, weekends, I have volunteered on weekends. There's been some nights that I go to meetings, whether it's our um, meetings, the planning commission meetings, I've gone to Macomb, the county meetings, just to keep our, you know, when we're involved or, you know, so they can put a face to Romeo, well, Romeo's on the agenda, Romeo's being talking about, I am represented, I've gone to yeah, groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, you name it, we, I will be out there. It's very important to have that community, community relationship, whether it's the residents or the businesses. Okay. What is your level of experience and expertise in finance, such as tax abatements? Tax abatements, I do not have that much of experience in that. I am, though, um, in the heart of another IFT. I am learning more and more about IFTs because of our industrial district. So, unfortunately, though, I cannot speak too much to abatements at this time. Okay. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. We have been doing wonderful in the last few fiscal years. That is also part of um, I made an announcement a couple meetings ago that even with all of our efforts, our projects, um, purchases, because you know equipment's outdated, we still have come in this last fiscal year $400,000 under budget. I am responsible for every penny leaving the village and I watch over the budgets very carefully. We do have an outside third party accountant that I work with, but I understand completely 100% how uh, municipal accounting works which um, I know not everybody, um, that's a tricky one for some people to grasp onto, but her and I, we have a great relationship, and yeah, I, I account for every penny that leaves that village. Nothing leaves that village unless I sign the check for it or I approve the expenditure, and we are doing quite well. Our fund balance, since I've been in office, has increased by easy million dollars. I mean, just $400,000 this year. Wow. <clears throat> What is your experience and expertise in personnel management and labor relations? Have you had occasion to terminate an employee? Explain the circumstances. Early on, I over okay. I oversee the um, cemetery, so I had um, a small crew of maintenance, um, like college-age kids, maybe just to give you a background. 
um, only two at the time, and we were, I was having an HR issue with him not giving me a heads up when he needed time off or was just leaving, and I did feel it was best to terminate him and end his employment with us, so I documented everything that I needed to document, and I brought in a witness. I, at the time, the, at the time, um, the only staff that was available in the building, because we share a building with our police department, I pulled in the police chief. Was, you know, I needed a witness and I explained to the police chief exactly everything that was going on before he walked in the building. And I'm also a part of the process for union grievances in the village. I actually have, I've been a part of meetings where the union rep and the um, personnel and then this personnel supervisor, um, I always joke that I'm step number four, that they have to come in front of me to make their case and then I make a judgment or a recommendation as far as that part of the grievance process, whether it needs to go to the Board of Trustees or not. And I actually have a meeting on Monday morning for the next grievance process that's in place right now. So I'm quite familiar with that too. Even, you know, union and non-union. Okay. What is your experience in planning, community development and redevelopment? Right now, we are finally finalizing our master plan. It's been um, 14 years old, um, but I am very proud to say that next month we are finally getting that off the ground. It's going to be finalized next month. It was not an item until I got into office. It was kind of just, I don't know, wasn't a priority until I got into office and I made that um, a priority and to see you know, continued growth in our central business district and our industrial district is growing. So I've been a huge part of that. As far as also getting on board, we never had in the village a village a certified planner. I brought on board a certified planner when I got elected. Because that To me, that is hugely important, even with residents and businesses alike, to get everything done correctly, even right out of the gate before they even break ground. Like yesterday, we had a pre-construction meeting on a new industrial location or a new medical location, and that is just hugely important because that was just kind of vacant and absent in the village of Romeo. But I just that is just so important to get everything right in order, right out of the gate, so there's no surprises, and just to be a part of that process to help them every step of the way, from you know all the way to you know, getting the building permits in the pre-construction meeting to finally getting their certificate of zoning compliance and their certificate of occupancy. I'm part of that step, even though I'm not the zoning administrator, I'm always involved with that step because that's just something that I really enjoy doing. Okay. Describe your experience in intergovernmental relationships, working with other cities, regional authorities, state officials, and others. Right now we do have a relationship with Bruce Township. They run our fire department. And I have a great working relationship with the fire chief. Um, I am out of the negotiations though that take place that was handled with the board of trustees and a separate subcommittee. So that is one thing. And I know right now, unfortunately, we are having an issue with our Romeo Parks and Rec that I don't have a direct position in either that is being handled by our village president. But we also have a great working relationship with the uh, Macomb County Director, uh, Executive Director Mark Hackle and his um, Deputy Director John Paul Rea. We keep him in the loop with a lot of big projects that are going on in the village. And the, um, I always get these initials wrong, the Macomb County Economic Development Coalition or no, community, it, it's in the county level that um, the head of that department, um, we're very close with her and we keep in touch with her too that they help out a lot with us. Um, so we have a great working relationship with our surrounding communities and the county level. Uh, between me and the president, we've, we've held, um, we've been working on that very hard in the last four years. Good. What is your experience in managing public works activities, including road maintenance, utilities, and construction projects? I, well, right now I do have a good working relationship with the Department of Public Works. They report directly to the president, though. But in the meantime, though, 
uh, when I'm in the office and items come in, I'm the one that handles them and I'm the communication between the main office, the residents, and the Department of Public Works. Like I said, I had a conversation yesterday, he's in constantly, or I'm at, you know, quick communication with him all the time. We were tre trimming trees this week. Uh, we are working on our roads and they keep us updated on you know, what's going on as far as patching maybe or work or yesterday I had a couple questions. I'm like this person, you know, this resident's asking about this, this person, resident's asking about that. I just go straight to them and I have a great working relationship with Department of Public Works. Okay. Describe your technology expertise and what software are you proficient in using? I always giggle on that because we do have a third party IT department, but whenever something happens, everybody's always at my door. But yes, we have a, um, we do have BSNA software. We have, I think about seven or eight modules that we have for BSNA that I'm very familiar with. And it is, we unfortunately had a cyber attack last year. So that was a big, another education on us. But um, no, I'm very proficient, very, I understand everything that's going on. I know the tricks and um, of what's happening, and I have a great relationship with their IT department too. But yeah, BSNA, I have all the modules of BSNA on my computer actually. Okay. Have you ever assisted a community with becoming a city? I have not. However, our president did uh, about two years ago do a research and have a um, committee formed, a resident committee formed, just to do the research and hired an attorney and another planner to um, just obtain research and knowledge and information before we passed it on to the residents. So I'm a familiar with the process and what would happen and how it would happen um, just based on that project that came to light with the committee. But at this time that has not gone any farther than just the research being finalized. Thank you. What can you bring to the village of Lake Orion? Why should you be chosen as the new village manager? I bring with me a lot of experience having worked in the village. Even as the elected clerk, I saw a lot of similarities between my responsibilities and the responsibilities for the village manager here. And in the four years that I have been a part of the village of Romeo, I have continued my education. I am a Michigan certified assessor's technician. I finished that. I am a um, certified citizen planner through Michigan State University. I am a Michigan, sorry, I brought them with me actually. <laughs> um, yes, and I am also a Michigan Association planning member. I am a certified Michigan municipal, professional Michigan municipal clerk. So I bring with me a lot of knowledge and a lot of education that for me, that just comes very naturally. This is something I very much enjoy doing ever since, like I told you earlier, ever since I was in high school, it just comes so naturally. All this knowledge just stays in my head, but I, I, I like educating people on it. I like helping people with it. I just, this is very much an environment I am very happy to be a part of. All right. Do you plan to live in the village? I do have plans to leave Romeo if, see if it calls for it. I have spoken with my family and those close with me. They know of my plans and you know, hopes that if it comes down to that, um, I will be very excited. Okay. Have you ever been dismissed from a position? Way back, um, right after college, I was an intern for a law firm. That's the last time I was dismissed. That was back in 1999. Okay. Okay. If you were offered the position, when would you be able to start? That is a good question. I have spoken with the village president, like I said, we're in a part of an election right now, but she knows my wishes to, if something else comes along, my wishes would be to accept that position and eventually leave Romeo. It would probably not be till November. I do have a replacement in mind. My staff is aware of what would be happening. And um, we would like, I would request a little bit of a transition period to get the, my replacement in place. So 45 to 60 days? 
Correct, yes. Okay. Yes, and it's, um, because she's also part of another municipality and she, um, she's in the clerk's office, so she's um, working on the election. So her staff, her position is needed as far as an extra staff member, yes. Okay. That's the end of the questions. Oh, okay. We started at 5.20 and um, it's not important that we utilize the full amount of time. What's important is you and what you've responded to. So we would allow, if there's anything you'd like to go back and say, additional information on any of these questions, that is something that you could do at this, at this point, but we're not asking any additional questions. And one candidate even asked us if he could ask us questions and we want to keep it as a even playing field and we denied him that opportunity. I'm sorry, you said you denied him? we denied him. that opportunity. Oh, okay, okay. So is there anything else you'd like to go back on the questions that we asked and add any additional information or are you comfortable with what we did here today? Um, can I just make a statement or a comment that's not a question? Um, I have seen that done. Uh, go ahead. Okay. No, I'm, I just wanted to let you all know that, um, yes, I am currently on the ballot with the Village of Romeo, but being raised there, living there, um, my children are being raised there, I am ready to go beyond the village limits over there of what I'm comfortable with and break out and to pursue something larger and bigger to continue with my career, because like I told you before, this is something very passionate about this. They always call me the nerd in the office because I feel like I'm the walking, every time they have a question, they come to me and I can rattle off the answers. I even have a great relationship with the attorney. I've stumped him a couple times. So I bring with me a great knowledge and a great love for the profession and for the communities involved. Very good, thank you. So we'll conclude at this time, Ms. Trapp. Okay. And we all thank you. Thank for you. Coming to our community and um, having the interest that you've shown and uh, throwing your hat in the ring. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Perhaps you explain the process. Um, go ahead, Mr. Stevens. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I do believe I stated that already, that we are going to deliberate at another session. Other uh, members that are not here today, there's five of us, will be reviewing this via videotape. And so we're looking to have it on our agenda as soon as possible. Okay. Wonderful. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.
overview, we only have five council members here of okay. seven. Okay. Our intentions are to do interviews and no deliberation this evening. Mm -hmm. And we will look to put that on the earliest next council agenda. Okay. The other two members are planning on reviewing the videos. Okay. Everybody has resumes. We have a series of 18 questions that we'll ask. Okay. And after the 18 questions, um, that's pretty much it. No other additional questions are going to be asked by us. And we did have one candidate ask if he could ask questions back to us. And to keep it an even playing field, we denied that okay. opportunity. So we'll have 40 minutes. And you'll be able to utilize that full time, hopefully. Okay. And uh, do your very best, which we appreciate. And thank you for being here today. So we'll call it a start time of 6.10. And we'll begin. Okay. So welcome, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Please give us a brief review of your professional experience and achievements. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a privilege just to be called for an interview in this capacity, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, professional summary and with achievements. Let's see. I'll start. I'm going to give you my public service, which is 10 years, and then I'll go backwards from there. So I, uh, the last four years as the village manager in Bingham Farms, uh, achievements there would include uh, negotiating a PUD, uh, which, uh, which is set to be uh, to have construction break ground in the spring. Um, massive $20 million project. Um, business license, ordinance, and development. Um, right now, uh, our master plan, we had to update it. We include lots of language about how to deal with post-pandemic uh, uh, office uh, use, as you probably all know. Uh, as a result of the pandemic, uh, businesses have rethought how they conduct business, and uh, they don't need as much space as they used to need. Um, we have an, a business district that's 29 office buildings, and a lot of them are vacant now. I mean, not completely vacant, but like, you know, 50% vacant. So we're trying to come up with various ways how, how, um, how we can help these business, at least these property owners, uh, fill their space. So um, our master plan has been sort of opened up, if you will, and allowed for mixed use concepts, uh, you know, the whole live, work, play concept. We're open to anything at this point in time. Um, the offices are, the office buildings are there. They're partially vacant. The parking lots are extremely vacant. <laughs> um, this whole work from home thing on Fridays, so it takes me 20 minutes to get to work. On, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday, it takes me 35. It's just that much extra, t extra traffic. It's kind of crazy how this has happened. So anyway, um, economic development in the village of Bingham Farms has sort of been one of my focuses. Um, we have rewritten the, the uh, zoning ordinance to allow for educational uses in the office buildings. As a result of that, we have the Hondros College of Nursing opening up. Uh, this fall. Uh, we have allowed for restaurant use in the office buildings where that was not uh, permissible before. Uh, and we have also rewritten the ordinance to allow for, uh, uh, to re well, redefine what a, what a doctor's office is or what a health care provider is. So we had a yoga studio come to us and say, we'd like to move into your village. Um, we have space. The zoning ordinance didn't allow for a, a yoga uh, studio. But yet, people are prescribed by their by their healthcare providers sometimes. Well, you know, do yoga, uh, or rec if it's not if it's not prescribed, it's strongly recommended. So we had we so we re rewrote our zoning ordinance to include things like bar studios, Pilates studios, yoga studios to allow that kind of thing, um, rather than just your regular old doctor's office, your traditional nine to five doctor like when I was a kid. It's a lot different nowadays. So those are just a couple of things that I've done over the last four years. Um, we've also increased transparency in the village. Um, 
that includes having a, having a, a, a camera and a, a whole a whole video uh, televised video uh, component installed in the village chamber village council chambers. When I first started there, uh, they didn't have that. I was shocked, frankly, um, that that there was no that the village meetings were not televised. So now we have that um, increases transparency, increases um, the. Uh, uh, visibility increases uh, participation. Um, it's, I think it's quite remarkable, and we did that with through a grant, um, so we didn't cost the village anything. Uh, really recently, uh, we were able to snag a hundred thousand dollar planning grant from Oakland County. Uh, perhaps you got it too. Uh, lots of communities did in Oakland County, but uh, our engineer and I, uh, village engineering consultant and I, Hubble Roth and Clark, we put that together. Um, and we were recently we were awarded that. that. That's fairly significant. Um, so that's just a kind of a couple of things over the last four years. Prior to that, I worked for three years at, at the uh, city of Lathrop Village, which is a city, not a village. Um, and uh, I had an increased number of responsibilities there. I ended up as the economic development director. Uh, I would say the crowning achievement there was to set up one of these garden centers, you know what I mean? Like the pop-up garden center that's up during the spring and people come in and buy their plants and whatnot. We had some vacant property, vacant uh, parking lots, was able to put together the owner of the, of the property with a, with a landscape company and we were able to create this really cool space, which is something that, that uh, Main Street uh, encourages, something that Oakland County's planning department encourages, the utilization of underutilized space. How do you do that? What's creative? Think, kind of think outside the box. And that's what we did there. That was kind of a cool thing. Prior to that, I worked uh, at a, uh, at a alternative high school, public high school, was a project manager. Uh, as my dad told me once, if you can talk to teenagers, you can talk to anybody. Uh, that seemed to be true, uh, especially with, you know, I was able to break through, had, a, had a, um, a cohort, as we called it, of kids that were at risk. Most of them were uh, from diverse backgrounds, uh, really enjoyed do with doing that. And that was my, my, uh, my career while I was pursuing my master's degree in public administration. Uh, prior to that, uh, I spent a number of years as a journalist. So I feel like that I served the public in a different capacity, uh, covering public affairs. I worked for a chain called the Mirror Newspapers, which was based in Southeast Oakland County. So we had uh, papers that covered the well, Royal Oak, Ferndale, Berkeley, Huntington Woods, Clawson, Pleasant Ridge. Uh, and I was a managing editor, I worked my way up to become the managing editor and manage that office. I won lots of awards, uh, including newspaper, uh, what was it, um, Employee of the Year, something like that, um, in 2005. It seems like it was ancient history. Uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, and prior to that, I worked for, for eight years as a legal assistant in a couple of, of big city law firms. And that takes me back to college. I think that's far enough back. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, quick, is there, can I grab a glass of water or something? Uh, um, is there any? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Didn't mean to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very good. What experience and success have you had in downtown development? Oh, well, I sort of covered part of that already. Uh, as the economic development director um, I, uh, in Lathrop Village, uh, you know, we, um, you know, as probably the Main Street manager and economic development director, a DDA uh, coordinator, I guess you call it, um, that was, uh, it was a lot of event planning. Uh, that whole landscape, or that whole garden center thing that I talked about was a major deal. Uh, Lots of introductions, putting people together in the same room, trying to get tenants to, to expand or to move or to, or to stay. <laughs> a, lot of it's, a lot of that work is retention. Um, I will be honest with you, when I first started doing that, I thought, you know, like, well, where's the grant money? Um, there's no magic to economic development. It's not like you just ring a bell and, you know, and the grant money falls out. You gotta apply for things. Uh, you, it is, a lot of it's hard work, a lot of it's, Discussions. A lot of it's uh, a lot. Of it, a lot of it is dealing with failure too, because not every thing you start ends up as a success. Things have to be really re-evaluated from time to time. 
uh, things need to be scaled down or scaled back or rethought. Um, not every plan is, you know, is showered in success, and I, and I realize that. Okay. What are your areas of strength as a village manager? Um, I would say that communication skills are probably right up there, and that frankly comes from my training and my work as a journalist. Um, uh, communicating is not just talking, it's not, it's not just writing memos, it's also listening to people. I mean, I, I've, I've conducted literally thousands of interviews with folks in person and on the phone and a few on, online, but mainly, mainly on the phone and in person, and um, that would be a big strength of mine, I would say. Uh, it was followed up by uh, an ability to, to resolve conflict. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of this job, is just making sure that that conflict is, is dealt with and so that things don't escalate. Another element is what I call PPSI. So that stands for problem, prevention, solution, involvement. So the, what it, you know, that basically means is that you, just, you, you analyze things before they get to be a problem in the first place. And you, you solve, you prevent, you improve. I mean, it's, it's, that's just how it works. And I'm pretty good at doing that. Good. Are there areas of management and local government in which you are not particularly strong? Um, well, I would say, and I don't mean to say, well, there's two ways. There's two things. First, uh, I've been a little slow to embrace new technologies. Uh, the, uh, the village of Bingham Farms does not have, darn it. <laughs> The village of Bingham Farms does not have a Facebook account, for example. Um, it, it, we have a small number of employees, and I can't imagine having someone sit on Facebook all day and answer questions or restart, respond to stuff. Um, so I've been a little slow on embracing that kind of thing. But I mean, it, what needs to be done or what needs to be learned, not a problem. Um, the other thing is, and, you know, I don't mean to, sound, to say that this is a, a true weakness, but uh, in Bingham Farms, we have, by charter, by village charter, there is a treasurer who writes the budget. I do not write the budget. So it's been a few okay. years since I've written one. We have a $2.9 million budget. I have a big hand in that. I'm part of the budget committee. The treasurer and I talk all the time, but I don't actually physically put, sit down and write it. So I might, that might be something that I, that I would be a little rusty on, but I will tell you this, um, I might not know everything walking in the door, but there, I don't think there's anything I can't learn at this point in my life. Okay. Could you characterize your style of management? Uh, sometimes it's participatory. You, just, you need to be part of, the, part of the situation. You need to be involved directly. Sometimes it's you sit back and watch. This is part of what's called the authentic leadership theory, which I subscribe to, but it takes time to practice. I mean, it's, it, involves, it involves five different components. I'm afraid if I try to list them, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna forget one, and then your guys are gonna be like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's called authentic leadership theory, um, and uh, it involves passion, it involves heart, it involves empathy, it involves setting example. Um, those are four out of the five, uh, uh, and I try to follow that all the time. Now, no one's perfect, and sometimes I might stumble, but part of experience is evaluating what you've done and fixing it and learning from it and moving forward. Okay. What level of community involvement would you envision for yourself, during working hours, after hours, or weekends? Hmm, good question. Um, let's see, you're open from 7 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, Correct. is that right? Is that a recent change? Yes. Okay, sorry, I asked the question again, I apologize. Yeah. Um, so, in evaluating all of that, I would assume that I would be here on a lot of those Fridays anyway. At least at first, learning, absorbing, maybe with the office locked, 
or the doors lock, being able to you know, sit down and wrap my head around some of the finer points of, of this community. Um, I would imagine, if, at least at first, I would be doing, I'd, I'd like to take tours, and I'd like to take them for, with different perspectives. So a police officer's eyes would be much different, uh, and we point out different things than, say, a DPW worker's eyes. And I would like to, I would take a tour of the community with various different people, uh, uh, trying to learn as much as I possibly can. Um, I have no issue attending weekend events. I will tell you that Bingham Farms doesn't have a lot of them, uh, or, or after work events, they don't, Bingham Farms doesn't have a lot of those, except for evening meetings, that is. Um, Bingham Farms doesn't own any property. It's, it's right in the charter that the, the, the community does not own property. So therefore, we don't own any parks, we don't have a senior center, we don't have, we don't have anything like that. So it kind of limits what activity can happen, like social-wise. Um, but when there is something, like the Village Festival, which I organized <laughs> on a Saturday, I was there. Um, of course, I'm there for every meeting, every planning commission meeting, every village council meeting, every ZBA meeting, every design review board meeting. Uh, next week, I got meetings because we're hiring a new treasurer. Um, so a lot of evening stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't get in the way. Um, I try to balance my work life out, to be quite frank with you. Uh, I don't prefer to put in 60 hours, so if I were to be coming in and staying for evening meetings, I might like to shave some time off in the morning, the next day, kind of depends. Um, it's something we could discuss, I guess, if we get down that road. Okay. What is your level of experience and experience in finance, such as tax abatements? Uh, well, I would say that, that's mo that most of that stuff is relied upon with the treasurer where I am now, so I don't have a lot to it. But, and I don't have a lot to add to it, and I don't want to speak about it because I would afraid I might say some, make some assumptions and, and sound kind of foolish. Um, again, I will revert to what I said earlier, is that I don't think there's much that I can't learn. Okay. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. The what? The fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. The fiscal environments. The environments, correct. That I have created, developed? Well, I'll read it again and we'll think about this together. Thank you so much. Yes, it's <laughs> all right. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. Um, I don't think I've developed any fiscal environment. I could say that I've inherited some and we've maintained those, um, but I haven't, I haven't out of whole cloth developed a fiscal environment. Sure. I'm sorry, I don't have I don't Oh, have no, else that's fair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay. What is your experience and expertise in personnel management and labor relations have you had occasion to terminate an employee? Explain the circumstance. Not yet. Well, yes, I have terminated employees, but it's been many years. Uh, that was back when I was at the paper. So that we're going back 20 years. Um, I, in, in Bingham, we have a small staff. I've had people leave. But they haven't been, haven't, we haven't terminated them. Uh, and in Lathrop, I did not have that responsibility. Um, so, a little bit of explanation uh, as far as Bingham Farms goes. We contract out a lot of services, including our police services contracted with the Village of Franklin. Um, and this year, 2022 and in 2018, we had uh, our police uh, union negotiations and I was on that team with the Franklin manager and the police chief and another person uh, from Franklin. So, there's a team of four of us. Um, so, that's pretty direct and hands-on. Um, that's two, two go-rounds, 18 and 22. Um, so I feel, I'm, I feel like I'm fairly uh, versed in that, and I would also say that I, a lot of times I do rely on the expert, and I would assume that in those situations you would have labor counsel. Uh, so I would rely on that person to provide me with some sort of advice. Um, 
In, in Bingham, I got to say, I, I'm very fortunate in not, not having to fire people, but we have had, had, we have had to do some discipline from time to time. And, and you know, my, my, my goal or my rule of thumb is that you praise publicly, but you discipline or critique privately. Uh, there's no point in causing office gossip or anything of that nature. You know, that's kind of how I, how I roll as far as that goes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> what is your experience in planning, community, community development, and redevelopment? Um, a lot of what's happening in Bingham and a lot of what happened in Lathrop would be infill. As these are built out communities, pretty much. Uh, we've had quite a, quite a lot of that in Bingham in the last four years. Um, houses coming in, I'm assuming you're referring to residential as well as commercial. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had a lot of that. Uh, you know, someone buys a property, knocks, it, knocks the house down, and, and builds on top. Um, we've had quite a bit of that. And uh, the, the, the process in, in Bingham Farms goes through the, um, the design review board for approvals, and then it gets, gets turned over to the village engineer, and then to the village building contractor, which happens to be the city of Southfield. Um, so I mean, but I'm pretty, I'm directly involved in all of that stuff. Um, whenever, when it comes to planning, uh, and we're talking about sort of some of the issues that I mentioned earlier about rewriting the planning, the zoning ordinance, um, the planning commission has uh, had to do some heavy lifting with the PUD that I mentioned, which is 14 and Telegraph, with the building an assisted living facility and an office building. Uh, it's vacant property right now. Um, the, uh, so the, the, the way I look at it, it's, it's planning commission and council's job to approve these things. I'm just shepherding them through. Um, I'm not supposed to have an opinion on this stuff. I'm supposed to help move it forward. And if it doesn't move forward, we stop. But that's up to, that's up to the elected officials. You execute, you know, and I make, or you set policy, and I execute that policy. Um, I've been very involved with that in the last four years. And prior to that, when I worked at Bingham, I was the planning, uh, the liaison to the planning commission for the village. I'm sorry. When I worked at, I get this mixed up all the time. When I worked in Lathrop Village, I was the city's liaison to the planning commission. So I've been constantly, in the, in the last seven years, been constantly involved with that. And very frankly, and fortuitously for me, um, the, our planning consultant, was uh, Giffels Webster, same person, Jill Bain, for both communities. Um, so I've, I've had this, frankly, this long relationship with that company. Uh, it'd be a shame to leave it, but I, sometimes it's time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Describe your experience in intergovernmental relations, working with other cities, regional authorities, state officials, and others. Um, I have extensive experience with this. Uh, we contract just about everything out. So our police, as I mentioned, goes with the village of Franklin. Our fire department, our fire service, is actually with the Franklin Bingham Fire Department, which is a private company. Um, I had never heard of a private fire department before until I started working there. Um, Everything, uh, Southfield handles our building, uh, HRC is our engineer, Giffels Webster is our planner, uh, we are members of SACWA, which is Southeast Oakland County Water Authority. I'm the alternate to that board. When I worked in, in uh, Lathan Village, I was the delegate to both SACWA, the Water Authority, and SACWA, the, the Resource Recovery Authority. Um, all of this stuff involves contracts and constant negotiation and constant communication. Um, and do a lot of that stuff um, constantly. In fact, this morning I met with um, with the well. We have our, our DPW service is done through uh, the, the village of Beverly Hills, which is right next door to Bingham. And I met with the new uh, DPW director who just got hired in there. Um, it was a very productive meeting. Anyway, yeah, it's all it's. I do this constantly. It's like it's like eating breakfast. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. What is your experience in managing public works activities, including road maintenance, utilities, and construction projects? 
We, uh, we've done a fair number of road work, road projects in, in, uh, in Bingham, and in, when I was at Lathrop, same thing, working with the engineer, uh, proper public notice, posting signs, all of that kind of stuff. Um, done a lot of milling and layover um, on roads, and right now, we are working with our engineers to put together a whole package to present to the community probably in 2024 uh, is a millage proposal to, for, to, do, to redo all the roads, uh, you know, with a 30-year lifespan. It involves not just roads, but also the, the stormwater system. In our community, in Bingham, it's a ditch and culvert system. It's exposed, you know, it's a little easier to, to maintain because it's, you can see it. <laughs> you don't have to dig deep. But on the other hand, uh, it's, it needs to be. It needs maintenance, and uh, uh, people think it's unsightly. Uh, so, so uh, the prettier you can make it look, the better off you are. So, anyway, our project, if we if we get forward with this, is to is to have a whole pro a whole package of timed out with road re reconstruction and stormwater uh, redesign. Um, we're constantly working with the engineers on that. They have all kinds of learning sessions, uh, study set council study sessions, and whatnot. It's productive. Okay. Very good. Describe your technology expertise and what software are you proficient in using? Technology expertise? Uh, so I mentioned that I'm a little slow on picking up some of that stuff, but that's more social media. You know, I don't have Twitter. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I think I have a Facebook account because I'm a musician, and if you're a musician, it's almost expected by club owners and whatnot. But um, uh, as far as what I use at work, it's BSNA. I, prefer, I would assume you use BSNA. Uh, you use, uh, familiar with Microsoft programs and, and uh, Apple programs. Uh, I uh, maintain the Village website as well. It's done through a company called Revise. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure if you use it. I don't think you do, actually. But uh, a lot of that. A lot of that programming in the, that's in the background has kind of become rather streamlined over the years. I can't say that I would pick it up instantly, but um, perhaps I would. I'm not sure who does that for you all, but uh, and who's res responsible for new notices and things like that. But I would um, uh, I do that for 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 the village, and also did it for for the city of Lathrop Village. Um, so I'm pretty well versed in that. I would say. Thank you. Have you ever assisted a community with becoming a city? No. What can you bring to the village of Lake Orion? Why should you be chosen as the new village manager? Well, you're not supposed to talk about your age, these things, but I'm 55. My wife and I don't have kids. Uh, I feel like I'm in the sweet spot of advancement. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not old enough to be the get off my lawn guy yet. You know, I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still vibrant. I'm still healthy. Uh, I'm still open to new ideas. Uh, I still like to see things through. I care. I have the experience. I have the education that you're looking for. I think I meet your minimum requirements at the very least. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm a great communicator. Very good. Do you plan to live in the village? No, I wouldn't move here. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. I don't think that's a requirement. Um, I don't think you could really require that anyway as a matter of state law. So I live in a, in a neighborhood in Detroit called Indian Village. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred and some year old house. My wife and I are old house aficionados. And she works for the city of Windsor in, in Parks and Rec. So when we decided to get married and buy a house together, and decided what side of the border to live on because she moved here from Canada. Um, we picked Indian Village, and partly because it's close to the border for her. So she's a few years older than me, and she's looking to retire. At some point in time, we would probably consider moving, but until she retires, I, I don't feel that's necessary. Now, it's a heck of a drive. Uh, it's 45 minutes. Uh, I see that sometimes people say it's the, the Lake Orion is a mere 45 minutes from downtown. Uh, so like that's a good thing. And maybe it is because you could be back and forth. 
Uh, whatever they've done with 75 construction, it might be a little, a, little, a little less drive. But it doesn't bother me to make that drive. If it bothers you, I, I guess you've got to look to the next candidate. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have you ever been dismissed from no, a position? No, never. If you were offered the position, when would you be able to start? I have a, by contract, I have a two month advance notice. I could probably shave some time off of that because of vacation uh, that I haven't taken. I could just take it at the end, so maybe make it instead of eight weeks, six weeks. Um, so that would be, I mean, the, the Bingham Farms has been good to me. I wouldn't want to leave them in the lurch. So, I would have to honor that contract. 60 days. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the 18 questions. Ah, okay. So what we've offered the other candidates is if there's any additional information that you'd like to step back on any one of those questions and provide. Otherwise, um, that would be the end of your interview presentation. All right. I'm kind of looking through my notes here. Just, just give me, give me just You're a minute. You're welcome to that. Right. Yes, sir. No problem, Mr. Martin. Well, um, I'm sure as I'm driving home, I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I, I don't have anything for you. So <laughs> thanks for the offer of going back. But I, uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> OK. All right, great. Well, that will conclude our interview. As I stated earlier, we'll look to have us on our soon as possible council agenda for deliberation and uh, action. Okay. And I think that's it this evening, except for thank you for choosing to come interview here at our community and um, participating as a candidate. We appreciate that. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily a question, but what is the, what is, the, could you tell me again the timeline for the approximate, uh, when is the next meeting that you mentioned? I do believe it's the 10th. The 10th of October. October. Okay. All right. <coughs> and then you will move forward from there. Would you let me know either way? Um, yes, I believe everybody will be notified. Okay. All right. Cool. Yes. Thank you, sir. Have a good all evening. All right. You all, thank you for having me again. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, if I don't welcome. see you next time, I'll tell you what, you've got a great downtown here. My wife and I have come up here several times to eat and participate in a couple of your events. Really impressed with it. Can't imagine you a Petoskey or something. Really kind of a nice Great. place. Anyway, thanks again. Yep, you bet. Thank you. Thank you.
Jared Crenadel, 400 pages. You're going to yeah. read. sit at a chair over there, some candidates have, or you're welcome to stand at the Alrighty. podium, such as you are currently, and most have been using that podium there. <clears throat> so um, we're ready to go. Welcome, Mr. McClary. You're the last interviewee for this evening, and I'll just give you a brief overview of uh, ground rules, if you will. 40 minutes, and then we terminate. We have 18 questions, and you're welcome to spend as much time on any one or as little amount of time on any one as you'd like. At the end, if we have extra time, we'll offer you the opportunity to go back and talk about any one of these questions again if you'd like to add anything additional that might come to mind. But other than the questions we're asking you, we are not asking any additional questions or allowing candidates to ask questions of us so that we keep an even playing field. The intent is we have uh, five members here tonight out of seven. Is the other two will watch the video and at the next village council meeting to have an agenda item and deliberate and possible selection at that time. Okay. So having said all that, I think I kind of covered the overview and we'll begin with question number one. Please give us a brief review of your professional experience and achievements. Uh, as far as my Professional experience, I have more than uh, 30 years of management experience uh, in city and village management. Um, I have uh, I've managed uh, cities, both large and small, uh, here in Michigan, as small as 1,200 population and as large as 34,000 population. Um, Villages, I've managed both uh, general law villages as well as home rule villages, so I have experience with both. Um, my experience uh, as a manager started out uh, with the city of Litchfield uh, in 1990. Um, I was 23, so I started out as a manager fairly young. Um, and. Uh, uh, that was down in Hillsdale County. Uh, but I have managed several communities, including Oxford and previously here in the village of Lake Orion. Um, but uh, like I noted, some of my, uh, some of the larger communities I managed was the city of East Point, um, the city of Ypsilanti, and the city of Garden City. Um, as far as accomplishments, I, uh, over 30 years, you're able to accomplish a lot of different things, not just by yourself, because a manager doesn't do anything by him or herself. Uh, you have great teams who are working with you and, and take so much of the credit. Uh, but uh, I have been uh, fortunate to uh, work on a number of projects, um, uh, city and village hall uh, projects, uh, building a new uh, city hall in East Point, uh, 17,000 square foot building, $5 million facility, uh, and uh, working on the uh, restoration of this facility, which uh, is near and dear to my heart. Um, um, water and sewer projects, road projects, um, uh, some of those projects, multi-million dollar projects, uh, but I would say that probably uh, the most enjoyable and the most meaningful uh, accomplishment has been the relationships that I have been able to establish with my staffs. 
Um, I've always been fortunate to have outstanding teams to work with and uh, forging those relationships, um, helping to develop my employees and lift them up. Um, that's what it's all about is, uh, is showing that you appreciate your employees uh, and everything that they do because nothing gets done without them. Uh, that is probably my greatest accomplishment. Great, thank you. What experience and success have you had in downtown development? So, um, I've worked with a number of programs uh, in downtown development. Uh, I've worked with downtown development authorities uh, in a number of communities. Um, I have worked with uh, a number of um, tax in incentive programs, the commercial uh, rehabilitation uh, tax abatement program, the commercial redevelopment uh, tax abatement program, um, including both of those programs right here in Lake Orion. Um, I have, uh, I've worked with uh, uh, developers and with business people uh, on um, other programs as well, PA, four, uh, PA uh, 328 personal property tax abatements. Um, and uh, so a number of programs in the downtown area. Um, and I'll leave it at that for now, uh, since you focus just on the downtown, but um, uh, Main Street um, uh, redevelopment ready communities. Um, East Point had a very uh, active RRC program. Um, so, uh, I've worked in a number of areas on, down, on downtown development, but uh, working very closely with uh, very capable, very talented uh, downtown development authority executive directors. Thank you. What are your areas of strength as a village manager? I would say, um, my ability to work with uh, many different types of people, um, my love for my job, and uh, the passion that I have for the communities that I work for. Um, this one in particular is, has been near and dear to my heart. I'm, uh, I grew up here. I went to um, Lake Orion, well, it was Lake Orion Junior High West over on Walden and Lake Orion High School. Uh, I graduated from uh, Oxford High School. Um, so being passionate about uh, your job as a manager, um, being able to, uh, to work well with your staff, to help them be the best that they can be, to help develop them, um, is, uh, is something that I feel that I'm very strong in. Uh, working with my councils, providing sound information uh, and sound advice uh, to my council so that they can make informed policy decisions. Um, I like technology, uh, so, uh, so I try to look for ways that I can utilize technology to uh, to help us work smarter, not harder. Um, I, uh, I try to be very organized in what I do um, because there are so many different things that a manager has to deal with that, uh, that if you are not organized, it's impossible to keep track of all of your tasks. Um, and uh, uh, just um, uh, trying to uh, be visible in the community um, is also very important. Um, and being knowledgeable of the 
different types of uh, the different laws that go into municipal operations, um, whether it deals with finance, economic development, um, uh, personnel administration. There are so many different areas that a manager has to be well versed in. Thank you. Are there areas of management and local government in which you are not particularly strong? Um, well, I've never actually done public works operations. I've, <laughs> <laughs> so I would, uh, I would have to say probably snow plowing is not in my, uh, 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 in my area of expertise. Uh, but I, I've always had great staff who, uh, who pick up that slack for me. So, all right. Could you characterize your style of management? Uh, I would say I am a participative manager. Uh, I believe very strongly in including um, all key stakeholders in important decisions, uh, including my staff uh, as important stakeholders in decision making um, when it comes to organizational issues. Uh, because I feel very strongly that if you are inclusive in bringing all of the key stakeholders together, uh, people take ownership of what needs to be done um, and they are more willing to do what needs to be done if they have ownership. Thank you. What level of community involvement would you envision for yourself during working hours, after hours, weekends? Uh, I'm available 24 hours a day. Uh, that is a requirement of a city or village manager. Um, that goes without saying. Uh, I think it's important to be visible downtown during events, um, uh, participating in events, um, not necessarily riding in the boat during the Dragon on the Lake Festival, but that's an added perk uh, with the police department. <laughs> um, and uh, um, connecting with uh, business leaders, with community leaders, um, with the, the faith community, um, making sure that, uh, that residents and business owners uh, feel that you are approachable um, and accessible. Uh, and I try very hard to do that. And whether it's, whether it's during the regular working day, um, in the evenings a lot of times, or on weekends when we have events, it's very important. What is your level of experience and expertise in finance, such as tax abatements? I have just a little bit of experience in those areas, whether it's uh, industrial facilities tax abatements, uh, plant rehabilitation tax abatements, I've already mentioned uh, personal property tax abatements, uh, commercial redevelopment, uh, commercial rehabilitation. Um, so I've, I've worked in all of those different areas. Okay. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained? I'm sorry, you asked that one again? It's an interesting question. Describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. The physical environments? Um, just for clarification, are you, you told me I can't ask questions. Um, I, I would take it for its face value that you've developed, describe the fiscal environments in which you have developed and maintained. You're saying fiscal. Correct. Okay. Uh, fiscal environment. So uh, I have managed communities that uh, were affluent um, and I have also managed communities that were severely financially distressed. 
Um, I was city administrator for two years in the city of Highland Park, and uh, that is probably one of the most uh, financially distressed communities in the state of Michigan, maybe right behind Benton Harbor. Um, we had an emergency financial manager there. I served as city administrator. Um, with the emergency financial manager, we were able to reduce the accumulated deficit of that community from $30 million down to $13 million. Uh, and then the governor decided to make a change in the emergency financial manager um, and brought someone new in. And, um, and so that didn't work quite as well once that change was made. But um, the accumulated deficit went from 13 million back up to 16 million. But, um, uh, but I've, also, I've also managed uh, some more affluent communities. Um, right now, I think uh, no matter what the uh, income levels uh, may be of the residents in, in the communities, municipalities are struggling. Um, and I don't need to tell you that we've got a broken municipal finance system here in, in the state of Michigan. And so um, uh, it is very important for the manager to understand all of the uh, revenue streams that, that go into making up a municipal budget uh, and uh, identifying, I believe very strongly in priority-based budgeting, trying to allocate very limited resources um, to the priorities uh, that have been established by council from year to year um, because those resources are so scarce. Okay. What is your experience and expertise in personnel management and labor relations. Have you had occasion to terminate an employee? Explain the circumstance. Circumstances. So uh, uh, as a city and village manager in all of my positions, I have had some role in human resources management um, from recruitment and selection, well, even before recruitment and selection. Um, doing desk audits and preparing job descriptions and uh, classification and compensation studies uh, to recruitment, selection, um, professional development, um, and performance evaluation, um, disciplinary actions, and termination, unfortunately, uh, in rare instances, but I have had to do that on occasion. Um, uh, in one uh, particular situation, uh, when I came in as a new city manager, the city council had lost confidence in their police chief um, and was, uh, was strongly advising me, I'll put it that way, to, to terminate the police chief. Uh, I believe that I need to be able to make personnel decisions based on my own evaluation of personnel. Um, I need to make sure that I have provided, provided adequate opportunity uh, for employees to prove themselves, to improve themselves if necessary, come up with uh, uh, performance management plans, uh, and in that particular case, I did that with my police chief. Um, he was, he had a very, uh, he came from the military, so he had a military leadership style. And it didn't fit well in the community. And so I tried counseling him. We came up with a professional uh, improvement plan um, unfortunately, it didn't work, and I, I gave him six months to show some improvement. He did not, so I had to terminate him. Thank you. What is your experience in planning, community development, and redevelopment? Uh, as far as planning, in many of my positions, I have actually served as a voting member on the planning commissions. Um, I'm very familiar with the uh, Planning Enabling Act. 
uh, the Zoning Enabling Act, Condominium Act, Subdivision Control Act. Um, and uh, so in terms of planning, uh, I've had quite a bit of experience working with planners, uh, developing master plans, um, uh, also working with planners and, and with council on uh, zoning, ordinance, zoning ordinances and ordinance amendments, um, uh, both in terms of tax amendments, uh, uh, zoning changes. Um, I've worked with boards of zoning appeals uh, and um, have a lot of experience sitting in on those meetings as well. Um, so, uh, so quite a bit of uh, planning experience. And what was the rest of your question? What is your experience in planning, community development, and redevelopment? So, uh, with community development, again, I've I've worked with um, uh, tax increment finance authorities. Um, LDFAs, local development finance authorities, uh, DDAs, uh, brownfields, um, and uh, in the economic development uh, incentives that I've already talked about previously. Um, and uh, working closely with our DDA executive directors, and in one community we had a TIFA, not a DDA, and working with our TIFA director. Um, in Ypsilanti, uh, we collaborated with Ann Arbor. Uh, we had um, the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti Spark, uh, and we had a, a joint local development finance authority uh, between the two cities. Uh, so, um, so we worked closely together on that. Um, and actually, in Ypsilanti, we had four separate downtown development authority districts. So, <laughs> so uh, they're not, uh, I don't believe they're permitted any longer, but uh, we had four of them. So. Thank you. Describe your experience in intergovernmental relations, working with other cities, regional authorities, state officials, and others. Uh, I've had a lot of experience in that area. Of course, when the Great Recession hit, um, it was very important for communities to start looking at how they could collaborate together uh, to reduce costs and still maintain the highest level of services we could. Um, East Point was one of those communities that was hit by the Great Recession up front. Uh, we lost uh, 25% of our taxable value in one year, and uh, which resulted in a uh, budget shortfall uh, in that first year of $4 million uh, to the general fund. Uh, so we had to scramble to start working with other communities to, to try to come up with ways to reduce costs. We worked with the city of Roseville on police dispatching um, we actually had a much larger group at the time, but it ended up being uh, Roseville and St. Clair Shores and East Point uh, that collaborated together. That saved the city over $100,000 a year uh, by consolidating police dispatching. Um, I worked with the cities of Westland and Dearborn Heights and Inkster and Wayne on studying district court consolidation. We, had, we all had separate district courts that we maintained. Uh, and so we undertook a study uh, to determine whether it would be feasible for us to consolidate those district courts. And, and that was, uh, um, it took us the better part of a year to, uh, to do that evaluation, but great opportunity for me to work with Mayor Paletko from Dearborn Heights, Mayor Wild from Westland, um, City Manager English from Wayne. So, um, uh, also in East Point, we worked on trying to set up a recreation authority uh, with uh, the city of Roseville so that we could um, consolidate our recreation resources, levy a millage uh, to maintain our parks and provide recreation programming. Um, and a lot of other areas that uh, we, I've worked with 
the state and, and counties and local units on, right down to DPW services, salt storage, sharing salt storage facilities and other things. Thank you. What is your experience in managing public works activities, including road maintenance, utilities, and construction projects? So my role has been in working on the planning and design end of those projects, uh, working with our engineers um, to uh, develop the projects, meeting with citizens and with councils uh, on the conceptual plans and then finalizing conceptual plans um, and, uh, and working closely with our engineers uh, on the uh, construction inspection end of things uh, once the projects are underway. Um, I always like to have either weekly or bi-weekly uh, progress meetings with our engineers and our contractors on projects uh, to make sure we're staying on, on task, on schedule, um, and that if any issues are coming up, we're anticipating them in advance. We can communicate with our citizens and with council in a timely fashion uh, so that nobody is surprised. Um, so that has been my role, is more of the facilitation end of things. I Thank haven't you. actually gone out and, and <laughs> reconstructed a sewer myself, so. <laughs> All right, thank you. Describe your technology expertise and what software are you proficient in using? Uh, financial software, um, I've worked with a number of systems uh, way back, uh, starting with the New World system, um, uh, Fund Balance, um, a system called Penimation, which was a Pennsylvania uh, school district uh, software package that East Point had when I first came in as city manager, and it was still on the DOS system. Um, we changed that, we, and uh, we went to BSNA. Uh, but uh, I've worked uh, most extensively with BSNA, um, but also in Ypsilanti we had ENCODE. Okay. Have you ever assisted a community with becoming a city? Uh, I have not. Uh, I have not assisted with actually becoming a city. Um, I've worked in communities where we have talked about it and we've evaluated the pros and cons uh, of becoming a city. And, um, and actually there's a little bit of a rumbling in my current uh, in my current community about uh, whether or not um, the village should either become a city or dissolve. I think, uh, um, I think in our particular situation, we've got the best of both worlds as a general law village. And, um, and the township doesn't lose anything when we annex property. They continue to collect their tax base on it. So, um, but, uh, but actually making that transition, no, I have not. Okay, what can you bring to the village of Lake Orion? Why should you be chosen as the new village manager? I think my, my love for this community, first and foremost, um, my heart and soul are here in Lake Orion and Oxford. Um, you know, being, being a, a local person. Um, my, uh, my ability to advocate strongly uh, for the community uh, when necessary, I think is very important and I bring that. My knowledge and expertise in so many different areas, being able to pull all of those different areas together and all of that information together for the council, for our staff, for our citizens, I think is very important. Um, and I think, um, I think my uh, my financial expertise, being able to work with finance departments and staff, um, and uh, you know, my main role is in the budget preparation area and budget uh, administration. Um, so being able to do those analyses so that council has uh, a lot of information to make an informed decision on the budgets every year. 
Um, and uh, and again, I think uh, I think my approach to managing in terms of engaging uh, my staff, engaging council, engaging our citizens in decision making, but also letting my staff know that I care about them as people and making sure that everything I do as a manager shows that I appreciate them. Uh, so those are just some of the things that, that I bring to as a manager. Okay. And then just an FYI, we have uh, about eight minutes left. Okay. So, and three more questions. Do you plan to live in a village? Uh, probably not. Have you ever been dismissed from a position? Yes. If you were offered the position, when would you be able to start? Uh, I would have to give my current employer 30 days notice. I see any other questions. Now, it's your opportunity to step back on any of these questions if you'd like to give a larger uh, comment or overview or elaborate on anything else that maybe you wished you had the opportunity to also say or express um, regarding these questions. Uh, again, right now we have about seven minutes left. So it's up to you or we can sure. call it the day, but it's up to you, sir. Well, I think, I think there are a few other things that I would like to highlight for you very quickly. Um, Lake Orion is a unique community in so many ways, but because half the community is Lake Orion, um, the fact that you have islands with, with uh, uh, residential properties on them and bridges that connect to them, uh, there are a lot of unique challenges that Lake Orion faces. Um, and it is important that you have a manager who understands those challenges. Uh, the, you know, right down to owning the rights of way and the dead end streets that you have in many areas and the ownership and the use of some of those rights of way and, and lakefront property by uh, private citizens and trying to grapple with that is, is, uh, is somewhat unique uh, to Lake Orion. Um, you are experiencing development pressures. Um, I know that you're working on uh, some projects uh, with the commercial rehabilitation uh, program and, uh, and trying to, uh, I've, I've watched some of the meetings, I've read the minutes, I know the, uh, the debates that have gone on back and forth about what is good for Lake Orion. Um, is all of this development really good for the community? And, um, and helping the council step through those issues is uh, something that I feel that I'm strong in and can help the council with. Um, but uh, I also know that you're, you're debating right now what the future of the Downtown Development Authority should be. And, um, and it's, uh, it is a, um, it's an interesting conversation to have and it's not one that is unique to Lake Orion. Uh, many communities have had those discussions. Uh, and, you know, looking at, looking at the benefit that the DDA has, I happen to be a manager who is very supportive of downtown development authorities. Um, at the point that you're not keeping money here in the community that would otherwise go outside the community, then there's a different discussion that happens there. Um, but in your case, almost half of your tax dollars um, through the DDA uh, come from, would be going out of the community. And uh, so it's, it's an important conversation to have. And, um, 
So uh, just, uh, I think those are some of the things I wanted to highlight. You've got a lot of issues. The lake drawdown every year. That's a, that's a perpetual conversation that goes on. Do we continue to do it? Do we not? Um, you know, do we just do the one year drawdown or, you know, uh, or do we do uh, the five year drawdown so that people can do their seawall improvements? You know, these are some of the things that I can readily bring uh, to the position on day one uh, because I've already worked with them. Very good. So, Anything else? I, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and, uh, and best wishes to you as you move forward in this process. Mr. McClary, we all thank you for being here tonight, for <clears throat> exhibiting the uh, desire to rejoin us and, and possibly or possibly rejoining us and uh, your compassion for the community. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Good night. Okay, council. <clears throat> we have at this point just the need to motion for adjournment. So move. Four. All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.